I'm recording this video on Nissan One, and you can see I'm in the screened-in porch, which is the tabernacle of my RV. It's I'm doing a temple service today. It's going to be awesome, guys. I, I wish I could share it with you. Um, but anyway, I am doing this video. This is such an exciting day. Um, this is all amazing stuff, guys. And I have so much to cover, so you're going to have to just, you know, you're just going to have to be quick, all right? We got, a, we got a lot to cover. I'm doing a video, guys, on the calendar on um, some important questions that you guys have asked, some frequently asked questions. Um, that are really good questions those that are on this channel because of the Enoch calendar um, you know I'm glad you found me and found the calendar um, and a lot of you are asking me some of the uh, similar questions so I want to do one video to cover a lot of things Man, most of what I'm gonna tell you I've already said um, but you know I know a lot of you are not really going over the other material but I really need you to do that because I don't have time to really rehash the same things over and over because I'm on to other things, guys. All right. So this calendar, guys, um, is is very important. And I want to talk about um, what happens in 2016, which really solidifies, you know, the Enoch calendar, right? Um, we knew that there were, you know, lunar eclipses. There were blood moons, right? And it was like, oh, these come on the Jewish feast day. Bang, bang, bang. But what happens is the Jewish calendar, calendar has a leap month so there's still lunar eclipses and solar eclipses going on they're just not on the right calendar <laughs> so this calendar uh tracks that now another thing i want to go over um is the uh kind of confirmations to this calendar of events that have taken place and transpired to the day now um one of which i want to uh, point out is the 9th of of 2015 so that would be the ninth day of the fifth month. Now, both the Jewish calendar and the Enoch calendar had the ninth of Av on the same exact day. Now, the ninth of Av is very, very critical for you to understand because Daniel's timeline gives it 790 days from the ninth of Av to the um, Day of Atonement 2017. And that begins the trumpet judgments. So that's very significant. Both calendars track that to the day. Then what happened is um, you have um, both the, uh, the, the fifth month and sixth month are tracked exactly the same days until you get to the end of the month of the sixth month, the month of Elul. And they said, oh, Elul has 29 days. But a sandstorm covered the rabbis. And they couldn't blow the trumpet. There's a sandstorm. They can't see the. They can't see the moon. They can't declare the feast of trumpets until they can see the sliver of the moon. They couldn't see it for two days. This confirmed to the day the exact Enoch counter I'm suggesting. Okay, so that proved that Elu has 31 days, which is exactly what I said. Then the cycle just continues. Then they add a leap month. <laughs> They add a leap month and they put Purim in the 13th month. <laughs> that falls on the lunar eclipse. So they're going to say, oh, that's Purim. No, it's not. That's Passover season. Okay. So that all this is, uh, it, it's such a shame. People don't know this stuff, guys. It's so sad. Um, but anyway, those were some things that, you know, kind of happened and, these are all critical. The, now, the reasons these this calendar is important, guys, are prophetic events, okay? It's prophetic events that this tracks, and it does track them to the day. The ninth of off, I'm telling you, is, is a critical one. There are more. There are more. But let me take the camera, and let me uh, bring it over here, and I'm going to show you what the, um, what the lunar eclipses and solar eclipses look like. Um, if we if we observe them, okay. So what happens, like I said, is they continue. All right, let's see if we can get this in the sun. You guys can see it. There we go. All right. All right. See this here, guys. Okay. So here are our four blood moons. Uh, Passover 2014. And Tabernacles 2014. P 
Passover 2015, um, Tabernacles 2015, right? Our four blood moons. Now, um, the last two had a solar eclipse two weeks prior. See that? Solar eclipse, two weeks later, blood moon, right? Then, solar eclipse, blood moon, right? But guys, look at this. It keeps going. Now, so you got four, right? Now you've got four solar eclipses followed two weeks later by by lunar eclipses. I don't know if they're blood moons, but they're, they're lunar eclipses. But no one is talking about this because the Jewish calendar has a, a month in there. There's no month. There's no 13th month. It's 12 months. So this is Passover in the Enoch calendar, right? That's going to be Nisan 8, which is two days before you present the lamb, all right? And then the next one, lunar eclipse in September, it's going to fall two days after the Feast of Trumpets. So everything continues in order according to the Enoch calendar. But the Jewish calendar is wrong because they have a leap month. But look at this, guys. This is a schedule. This is a schedule. Now you say, well, geez, Leland, that's amazing. Does that continue? At, so we, now we're talking 2016. Does that continue in 2017? Actually, it does. But what happens, see, look at here. You got solar eclipse two weeks before a lunar eclipse, right? Now it alternates. So then you have a lunar eclipse two weeks before a solar eclipse. Okay, so this one here, September 1st, 2016, is over here. September 1st, 2016, okay? So now we're just continuing that here, and look what happens. Lunar eclipse two weeks later, solar eclipse, February. Now, this does not come in Passover. This comes on Purim to the day on the Enoch calendar, solar eclipse. Then you have a lunar eclipse in August. And that falls in two weeks before August 21st. Now, this is not a feast day, but this is important. Because look at August 21st, 2017. Now, keep you got to keep following me here, guys. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the Star of Bethlehem. Okay? Now, the Star of Bethlehem happened June 30th, 2015. Then it's going to happen again August 27th, 2016. So you see that? August, August, right? Now this is 2017, this is 2016. Now, this interval right here, July 30th to August 27th, is 424 days. This is why the Enoch calendar is important, guys. This is code for this calendar. Because if you take that number, you'll see that it's 60 weeks. And it's 364 days. That's what's in the Enoch calendar. Plus 30 days. Now what happens is this calendar is the only one that can track it to where it falls perfectly one year and two months. So in the Enoch calendar, this is going to be, uh, or this was, the fourth month and 14th day of 2015. And it's going to be the sixth month and 14th day of 2016. But this is the only calendar that can break down and uncode this number of days. 364 plus 60. Now I'm going to get into, yeah, there's two lines here. <laughs> but there's nothing written because I'm going to get into that later, guys. All right? Now, the other thing you'll notice is these intervals between the lunar eclipses, right? You see that? 176, 178, bam, 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 right? Solar eclipse, bang, bang. Well, remember this one here? There they are. <laughs> We're getting to that later. We're not getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, so, but in 2016, the focus of this video is to tell you the lunar eclipses fall in the Passover and um, fall feast schedule exactly as they have in previous years, guys, okay? You got that? We're cool? All right. Cool. Now, uh, let's get into some frequently asked questions. Um, frequently asked questions. Um, one of them is, 
when, uh, why, why are you using the house of David, or what are you talking about with the house of David in this, this calendar? All right. Now, let me give you a little uh, background on this calendar, why I started looking at it. All right. Now, I started looking um, about the house of David. I have a whole series on the house of David. And I started studying it, and I started seeing these patterns, and I was looking for a calendar that matched what I was studying in the house of David. And that is the order of angels and the order of the elders and all that stuff, right? Now, there are 24 elders, and what I began to learn is that the elders represent weeks, okay? So you have 24 elders, and they serve twice a year. That's... Uh, 24 times 2 is 48, so you have 48 weeks. Then I began to realize that the pre-flood, you had 48 weeks plus three of the Lord's feasts that were weeks. So now you have 51 weeks. Now if you multiply 51 times 7, that's 357. Then first fruits and unleavened bread come on the same day. They're the same day, so you don't count that. But if you add three more days, you come up to 360 days. So pre-flood, there was a 360-day calendar where the sun and moon and everything was perfectly aligned. Bang, 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 30-day months. Everything was bang, all right? Then the judgments came. The earth was on a straight axis. There were no seasons. It was just all a rainforest. It was all one thing. Then you have uh, the earth knocked on its axis. In God's covenant with Noah, he instituted seasons. With those, you add four days for the solar days. Okay? So I began to see that the Enoch calendar was the one that most closely represented these patterns. Because what happens in a Jewish calendar, guys, is you, you, don't, have, you, know, you don't have always 12 months. You have, you have to add a leap month. So in a lunar calendar, every 19 years, you need seven leap months. Because a lunar calendar is 29.5 days. That's 29 days one month, 30 days the next. Then you come up with 354 a year. You have to add them. You have to add it. You have to come up with days. All right? So they add a leap month seven times every 19 days. Every night, seven times every 19 years. Right? Now, this is not good because God's pattern is 12. There were 12 sons, right? 12. There was actually one daughter. So that's the 13th. So what happens is when you have a 13th month, it's not just, it's not just oh, it's a leap month, 8R2. No, it's not. It's a seat. It's a throne. And someone is sitting in it. Now, if you had 13, and this is regular, you have a regular 13th. And there, it happens seven times every 19 years. You have a woman sitting on a throne. On a seat. Judging a month. Now what's happening is there's a lunar eclipse. And they're putting that on Purim. So this is the harlot. The Jewish calendar is the harlot, guys. That's exactly what I'm saying. If you have... The harlot sits on seven mountains, guys. <laughs> so every 19 years is a, is a mountain she's sitting in. She is... Uh, running the show in the Jewish calendar. It's the wrong calendar, guys, okay? Now, the Gregorian calendar is the beast system, so that's not right either. So we can't use either of these calendars. They're both false and off, and they alternate the feast just like they are. You can see the, the sun and the moon is telling you. <laughs> now, let me show you something else about uh, the House of David and, and why, you know, why this is... Uh, important to follow you know these eclipses and everything right we got all excited oh look at the solar eclipse lunar eclipse watch this jeremiah 33 19 word of the lord came unto jeremiah and said that says the lord if you can break my covenant of the day now the day we know is the sun and my covenant of the night which we know is the moon there should not be a day and night in their season then also then may also my covenant be broken with david my servant House of David, remember that he should not have a son reign upon the throne. <laughs> so what I'm telling you guys is the lamb is reigning on the throne. <laughs> but what is this covenant with? The sun, the moon, all right? 
as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea, so will I multiply the seed of David. Verse 25, if my covenant be not with the day and the night, if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and the earth. All right? So I'm telling you, the house of David is connected with the ordinances of these solar eclipses, blood moons, and the star of Bethlehem. Okay, so what does that have to do with the leap cycle? So in, a, in an Enoch calendar, you still have to come up with a leap cycle. You, okay, you want 364 days? Fine. But a uh, tropical year is 365.24. So you got to come up with days. All right, so I'll show it to you. First Chronicles 24, I told you about the 24 elders, right? Now, First Chronicles 25 is also an order of 24 priests. And these are the singers and musicians, okay? Um, and verse 2, which prophesied according to the order of the king. Remember the king sitting on the throne. <laughs> uh, who prophesied with the harp to give thanks and praise to the Lord. And these were under the hands of the Father to sing songs in the house of the Lord, sing them with psalteries, harps, into the service of the house of God. Now watch this. Verse 7. So the number of them with their brethren were instructed in the songs and singing, and were cunning, or the musicians, were 288. So what you do in this calendar is you use that number, 288. Now 288 is 24, remember there's 24 priests, times 12. Remember, there's 12 months. So how this works is every 12 months, um, you're, you're, you're accruing those months as a year, and you take 24 times 12, which is 288. So every 288 months, you add a month, okay? And that gives you your leap cycle. The other question that people have asked is, where is that in the book of Enoch? Well, it's Enoch. Now, there's different versions of Enoch, but I'm just going to tell you this is my version. I don't read all the other ones. This is mine. It's Enoch 74, verses nine, uh, 10, 11, and 12. Um, and if after five years be if five years be added together with a son in the surplus of 30 days, all the days which accrue, for it, for if one of those five years, when it are full, amount to 364 days, and the surplus of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days. In five years, five days every year to come to 30 days. And the moon falls behind the sun and the stars the number of 30 days. That's your 30 days, guys. Okay, So you get those 30 days by adding 288 months. All right? So there you go. All right. Um, so that's why um, the House of David helps us because it gives us... Yes, the, the uh, solar and lunar eclipses, they continue. And we also have, uh, you know, um, the pre-cycles. For me personally, this is very important. Also because of other things we've learned, we've gone over before. All right. Now, uh, the other good question, uh, important question that people ask is, uh, how did you come up with, now if you have a 24-year cycle, how do you know what year one is? That's very important. You need to know what year one is because then the thing just runs, all right? Now, uh, let me show you this. Uh, I'm just going to bring this up here because I'm going to show you just real quick. Now, guys, this is an example of the Dead Sea Scrolls calendar um, in Quimran. And you can see in year one, uh, right here, in year one, this is what they their year one looked like. They tracked the Enoch calendar for six years. Okay, and their first month, this is what it looked like. They had a full moon on the first day, and they had a full moon on the 30th day. Okay, so they started their cycle of years with this type of sequence or arrangement. Okay, now I like the Quimran and Dead Sea Scroll calendar because it, um, it tracks the priest courses, all right? So that's why I used that and studied it. Now what I had to do is I had to try and find a year that had an alignment that looked like this or something close to it. Now with what I have here, I'm out on the road, I no longer have a computer, so I can't show you what it looked like on the computer when I did this research. But basically I was looking for a full moon in close proximity to the spring um, equinox, the vernal equinox, okay? And the uh, best I could do, um, and I've looked for like 50, 60 years, um, 
was to try and find this and try and find it 24 years later. Well, the best that I could do was 2014. So 2014, it wasn't perfect. It didn't look exactly like that, but it was close. Okay, and the next cycle, 24 years later, also uh, looked close. Was a 2038. All right. So that's what I used to go by year one. Okay, because when this thing runs, guys, you're not you're not checking when the um, you know when the uh, spring equinox is every year because it it just runs. You just you know um, that's that's just how it that's just how it goes. All right. So that's a, a good question, which then leads to the question of, well, uh, how do you know the days? Now, you can see in the uh, Quimran, candle, this is a Quimran calendar, you can see that uh, this one that I have, you can see that the, the month starts on the fourth day, okay? And they say that, well, that's because God created the sun and moon. Day one, he said, let there be light, right? But there was no sun. <laughs> no, a day was still a day, but there was no sun. There was no clock uh, created yet to uh, manage the time. That didn't happen until day four. All right, so that's why uh, they have it day four. I am in agreement with that in Genesis 1. I know some of you have asked, uh, and that's uh, my answer to that. Now, when we get to 2014, it's like, okay, we have 2014. How do we know? that we have the proper alignment. Well, what you do is you have to look to Jerusalem and you have to look to a day of equal sunlight nighttime, okay? Now, basically how I did that is I used, I just looked it up online and I used apps and different things to see, okay, when was that? Well, um, it, it was March 17th, all right? It was March 17th, but the point by which the, uh, Days were equal sunlight daylight is seven. It's around this the time it is now. It's seven thirty or thereabouts. It's not exactly seven thirty. I don't remember what it is. All right, but that then is the next day. Okay, so when uh, there's some weird things you got to get used to with doing this calendar from the Gregorian system, guys. All right, so the point by which it it is equal daylight sunlight is actually the next day. Now the Gregorian is just like, look, it's March seventeenth. It's 7.30. It doesn't change till midnight, right? But this one changes when the sun goes down, making it the next day, all right? The next day, then, is March 18th, which is the 364-day point. Now, once you have 364, then the next day is day one. And that's why it's March 19th, 2014, as day one Nisan, okay? All right, I did that the best I can to explain that day one now those are very good questions and as you can see they're very important these are very critical questions to ask okay uh leland when did you start this why did what was the year what was the day okay and then it now it just runs okay now guys any other questions you have ask away but don't fight and squabble with me over calendars and have nasty comments i'm just not going to answer you okay um I'm not going to change much in this because it's already done. I'm on to a lot of other things, guys, okay? I know this might be new to you, and if you follow it and you watch, you're going to say, this is right. <laughs> this is crazy, man, okay? Um, and another one question that's asked to me a lot is the Sabbath. It's like the Sabbath is not Saturday, or it's not that day. It was lost. in the, in the the. It was changed at some point, okay? Um, now, that may be possible, Um I have honestly not done the research, but I have so much confirming this calendar, um, and I've you know I haven't spent a lot of time. But I'm just not going to change the Sabbath, guys. I'm sorry. I don't really see much uh, proof to really prove a point there to change it. So um, I'm leaving the, the the seventh day, the seventh day. Okay. All right. Um, now another question that's asked to me is people want to learn about the constellations okay when you get this calendar and you look at pages four and five on pages four and five you'll see the singers and musicians those are the ones where the year changes okay now in the main uh calendar pages two and three you'll see priest courses there that's first chronicles 24. all right the other thing you will see is i have constellations listed now i have this um there now, the constellations are not about you. They're not about the year you were born. They're about the Lord. They're about his story, not you. Okay, so don't twist this stuff and make it about some kind of message for you. 
Get over yourself. This is about the Lord. He's coming. Okay? Now, he put these signs in the heavens, all right? And they tell a story. They give a prophetic message. The easiest way to understand them is relate them to the book of Revelation, right? So, today's nice on one, right? It's the Lamb. <laughs> it's the Lamb. It's Passover. Glory to God. Okay? Um, and I'll just run through some real quick. The Taurus is the ox. You got the living creatures. You got ox. You got the lion, lion of the tribe of Judah. You got one of the four faces, the lion. Okay. Um, Gemini is twins. Well, that's the two witnesses. Okay. Um, Libra is the scales. What's guy in the black horse holding? Scales. That's the season of the black horse. Um, and Aquarius poured out like water. That's the man of the living creatures. Lion, ox, man, eagle. Man. Okay. Um, Pisces, fish, that's the multitudes of people, all right? Those are just some quick ones. The, const, the, uh, the, the thing to follow those guys, get um, E.W. Bullinger's book called Witness to the Stars. It's, a, it's an excellent example of uh, going through the constellations, okay? So get that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. It does confirm all this other stuff. Um, I just have so much to do, I can't do everything, okay? Uh, so... I think that covers it, guys. Um, let me check my notes here. Uh, just wanted to point out the importance of 2016. All right. 2016, the Enoch calendar, I'm showing you the lunar eclipses, solar eclipses continue on time according to the feasts. Okay. So, again, we have the lunar eclipse on March 23rd. That is Nisan 8. Okay, that's two days before you present the lamb, all right? Then the other one is um, September 16th. That's two days after the Feast of Trumpets. Now, the Jewish calendar is going to have these all off completely a month late. Why? Because the woman is sitting on the throne alternating all the feast days for the whole year. Okay? All right, good. Okay, um, so guys, that does it. Let's blow the trumpet in Zion. Hopefully, I'll do a good one here. <laughs> I uh, love you guys. God bless you, and we'll have some more soon, okay?